Hello and welcome to lesson one, cash flow analysis. Our objectives in this lesson are to use cash flow analysis to help us set up a budget, which you already have some experience with, and then we'll use that cash flow analysis to evaluate different category guidelines. For example, um, you know, how much, what percent on food, what percent are you spending on entertainment to evaluate if you're in the right guidelines or not. So let's look at our first example. In this example, Dave and Joan want to chart their monthly cash flow. And let's think about why cash flow is important. If you need to, pause the video and think of some things in your head and then come, come back on. Okay, so if you think about monthly cash flow, monthly cash flow is the, is the amount of money that you have each month to pay for your bills, your expenses, um, things that you might want to do, discretionary type expenses. So your monthly cash flow determines whether or not you can afford to take out a loan for a car. Do you have the monthly cash flow to cover that payment, for example? So it's really important to know what you have as far as cash coming in and cash going out each month. And that really simply is what a monthly cash flow statement is. Cash in, cash out. And your goal is to create a spreadsheet that will help this family keep track of their income and expenses for the month. <clears throat> so there's some steps that we follow when we create a a monthly cash flow statement. The first step is to collect monthly amounts for the following categories. Well, income, first of all. We need to make a list of all af after-tax income. And think about why we say after-tax. Because we don't actually get our taxes. Those come out, right? Our employer takes those out, so we get a lesser amount. If you remember back to a previous lesson, we talked about gross income versus net income. And net income is after taxes are taken out. So our income that we would include would, it would be our first jobs, maybe we have a secondary job, um, maybe we collect unemployment or social security, we could have a savings account and we earn interest, you might be collecting child support, paying alimony, getting alimony, um, perhaps people have given you, family has given you gifts, things like that, any type of cash that comes in each month. So make a list of that. And then think about our three types of expenses. We have our fixed, variable, and discretionary. We also want to keep track of that. So again, just to refresh, our fixed expenses are those that stay the same each month, like your mortgage or your rent, any loan payments that you have, insurance premiums, that type of thing. And then our variable expenses are the things that change each month, like food, the amount we spend on food changes each month. Utilities, that varies. It can vary depending on seasons. In the winter, you're gonna spend a lot more to heat your, your property. And then we finally have discretionary expenses, and those are things that you control. And that would include savings, for example, or entertainment, going out. You can choose to go out and spend money, or you can choose to stay in. Okay, so let's look at how we would build that spreadsheet. If we were going to create a cash flow analysis, we would have our income here into our Excel spreadsheet. And then we would total it. And remember that when we total income, we use Excel and we use the formulas that are embedded in there. So we hit equals, and then we sum B2 through B3. So B2 colon B3. And then we have our fixed expenses. Notice that we have broken those out, fixed expenses, and we've listed all those. And then there are some blanks. Maybe you are thinking in the future that you will get life insurance, but you haven't started paying any premium. So we've put that in and we've left it blank. Um, cable TV, you don't have cable TV right now, but at some point in the future, you're thinking that you might invest and in, have cable TV. So we have our total fixed expenses, and then you have your variable expenses here. And we talked about how these vary each month. And again, maybe in your current situation, maybe you're renting, you don't have to pay for sewer and you don't have to pay for sanitation, but you know that in your previous apartment you did. So you leave those on in case you are moving. Um, perhaps you don't have a home phone at the moment either. Okay, so you make a list of all the variable expenses. And then we have our non-monthly, um, and these are discretionary type expenses, but some of these you could actually put under variable. Um, we do have medical here, but then we have some medical dental here. Maybe this was a teeth whitening or something like that. So we notice we have some tuition, you're choosing to go back to school, vacations, gifts, things like that. So we have our total non-monthly expenses per year. So these are just big amounts that we've paid a one-time payment for. Um, they're not a regular occurring monthly expense. So what we need to do though is we need to put this in terms of monthly. 
So even though we've only gotten our teeth whitened, say, that one time we paid $600, we need to put in that in terms of what does that mean for us cash flow wise each month. So we've totaled those up to get 12,000 and then we have divided by 12 to get 1,000 per month. So we are just estimating then that we have $1,000 of cash outflow each month for these non-monthly discretionary type expenses each, each year. All right, and then we've totaled up our expenses. So we have taken the $29.90 plus the $2,000 plus the $1,000 to give us our total monthly expenses. And then we end up with our monthly cash flow. So the formula for that is going to be this cell, B5, which has our income, 6100, minus, so you can actually type in the minus, and let me write that here. And remember that you have access to all the free Excel tutorials. So in this situation, we would have equals, and we would have our B5, and then I would type a minus, and then we need our expenses here, which is in cell E22, it looks like. So we would subtract E22. And this will give us our net cash flow at the end of each month, and it's 110. All right, so then you will now need to analyze, you know, what's good about that? What's bad? What am I spending too much on? Is that okay? I have a monthly net cash flow, a positive 110. That's at least good. It's not negative. But let's actually go through and analyze this a little bit. So what advice would you give to this family if their cash flow was negative 160? Think about that for a minute. And then if you were to look back at this spreadsheet, you would obviously first look at the non-monthly expenses per year, things that you can control, and you would look at what you've spent a lot of money on. Well, you know, I went back to school and that was $3,000, but that's a one-time thing. That's going to go away. So perhaps if you were at negative 160, that would just be temporary. You know, that could be one item. But then let's look here. We have vacations of $1,200. Maybe we could consider not taking a vacation this next year or taking a vacation that didn't cost as much money. Um, and, you know, taxes are going to be one of those things that you have to pay regardless. Um, but maybe these are taxes on a new car because you bought a car. So depending upon what that is. So we would first analyze, what would you tell this family, is to analyze the non-monthly discretionary type expenses per year and see what you could cut back on. And then you might look over here and say, well, but we still have savings of 300 so I guess I could reduce my savings in order to have a positive cash flow each month. That's one thing. Um, groceries and food. What type of food am I buying? Can I shop at a cheaper store? Something like that. Things that are going to be difficult to change would be, for example, your rent or your mortgage. Um, definitely your car loan. But maybe your car loan is going to be paid off in another year or two years. And so we know that this is this negative 160 might only be temporary. So it would require a full analysis of what we're doing, what we're spending money on. Now here's something. The Consumer Credit Counseling Service suggests that transportation expenses be between 6 and 20% of your budget and savings be between 5 and 9%. So that's what's suggested. Determine whether this family spending is within the guidelines for these categories. So let's first look at our transportation expenses. So we want it to be between 6 and 20%. So how do we figure that out? Well, what we need to do is we need to go up here and we need to find all of the transportation expenses. So if we look over here, we have our car loan payment. That is part of our transportation expenses. And then if we come down, we have our car insurance premium. That is also part of our transportation. And then if we continue on down here, we have fuel, 160. So I'm just circling everything that relates to transportation at this point. And then we have an additional 700 here of auto-related expenses. We don't know what those are, but it looks like transportation. Okay, so to figure out our transportation, what we'd want to do is we'd want to take all these expenses. So we have the 200, we have the 60, the 160, and the 700. And we'd want to add these all up. So I get 1120, total transportation. So how can I determine if that falls within an appropriate range, if that falls between 6 and 20 percent? Well, 
what I need to do is figure out what percent this 1120 is of my total expenses. And I know my total expenses, they're 5,990 right here. So in order to find percent, I always take the part divided by the whole. So I have 1,120 divided by the whole, which is 5,990. Let's pull up our calculator and see what that is. So if I look at that and I round, let's just say to 19%. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this by 100. One, two, to get the percent, that gives me 18.69. And I'm just going to round to the nearest percent so I get approximately 19%. How does that look? Well, it is between the six and the 20%, but it's a little bit on the high side. So I just need to be careful there. Let's look at our savings. So we found savings down here to be 300. So savings is 300 out of the total that we spend. So again, if we pull up our calculator, we take 300 divided by 59.90 total expenses, we are spending about 5% on our savings. And savings should be between 5 and 9% of our budget. And again, we're right on the edge, 5%. So at some point in the future, maybe once we start paying off some of these debts, we can increase our savings to be more in the middle. And again, with transportation, we might want to look at what type of auto-related expenses we have here. Um, obviously, if we pay off our car loan payment, that's really going to help us. So maybe we can um, pay that off sooner. It's going to be hard to change the car insurance premium. It's going to be hard to change fuel. But there are some things that we can be um, adjust on our own or that can get adjusted as we pay them off. All right, so that's an overview of a cash flow statement and a cash flow analysis. So in your assignment, you will be building a cash flow statement and you will be analyzing it in order to determine if you are within certain ranges.